Hey, in this video, I'm talking about autism and vulnerability and what that means for you as an autistic person. All that coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I make weekly videos on this type of stuff. So if you've stumbled across this video and you'd like to learn more, consider hitting that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell to see more videos like this one. Also, if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a like and a follow to see more videos like this. Okay guys, welcome back. It's been awesome. I thought I would uh, do this video talking about vulnerability in autistic people because I've not really seen anyone really talk about it in, in depth, in length, and and kind of like from their perspective, especially being an autistic person myself and knowing vulnerabilities exist and where those vulnerabilities are, I thought I'd do this video talking about those specifically. So here goes. Hey guys, if you have anything to add and want to ask me a question, please pop it in the comment section down below because I read and respond to every single question and I would love to have that conversation and open a conversation with you. All right, let's go on with it. So why are autistic people vulnerable? Now, typically autistic people are more vulnerable than neurotypical people, people basically who are not on the autism spectrum. And the reason for this is because autistic people have issues with social interaction and communication, which could lead to areas of vulnerability. And let me explain. So imagine uh, you have an autistic person who, um, I don't know, has a lot of savings saved up. Then you have somebody who is not a nice person who wants to get access to their savings. The person who is not nice could trick the autistic person into believing that that's what friends do because it's a social situation and all friends do in social situations is give each other money. So people with autism actually have issues with understanding the concept of social interaction and the concept of social uh, like conventions and, and, and social etiquette because it's, it's quite difficult to grasp those. So if you've not really been familiarized with those things and you're told by somebody this is how it is and that's what we do you kind of just go along with it and be like okay well that's what i do there's actually a really big issue where there's actually people like that who um who do fraud for a living who, who fraud people who are on the spectrum and it's a big issue and the police are actually uh, doing something about this now as in they have like a program specifically set up for this um and uh, they they they, they set up like a, a system where you register your name and email address with the police. And if there's any issues or any funny business like that, the police can get on the case ASEP. Now, another situation could be the fact that Autistic people take things at face value as literal. So they're kind of literal thinkers. So I am a literal thinker, obviously, because I'm on the spectrum. Um, for example, once my friend asked me to put, um, she was eating a banana and drinking coffee, and she should put the banana peel in the coffee cup. She goes, oh, can you put that in the bin for me? And so I threw the coffee cup and the banana in the bin, and um, she was like, well, no, I wanted to put the coffee cup on the side, just the banana peel in the bin. And I obviously took what she said quite literal. So it's not a case of just kind of trying to read between the lines. That doesn't work for autistic people. So this could be, again, in that same scenario. A nasty person could be like, hey, I really need that money because I'm sick and I need to go and buy medicine or whatever. And they could be lying completely. But the person on the autism spectrum can take it just as complete literal um, sense and be like, okay, cool, here, here's my money. So there's a very difficulty, a very big difficulty there with financial kind of vulnerability uh, and keeping yourself safe. Now, other than that, because autistic people uh, have issues with uh, understanding authority. So when you're around authoritarian people like um, supervisors and work, police people, medical staff, it could be anybody of an authority, um, they're normally not uh, as open and, and, and easy to understand. So for instance, say you're going through TSA, right, you're, you're flying out and you go through TSA, and they want to check all your security and stuff like that. Now they're quite blunt and abrupt. And so if you don't understand what they're saying, they'd be quite difficult. And then of course that could spiral into you not understanding what they say. And then there could be a conflict of interest and be some animosity. And that could spiral into like a, an issue where you might be detained or you might get like a, a ticket or something could happen because it, it comes from a lack of understanding. Like those people in those positions don't have any training or prior training and knowledge in autism. And so that's not your fault, it's their fault. But it does open you up to vulnerability uh, because you, you are more vulnerable in those situations. Knowing social and communicative aspects of things like where you should be, uh, people could take advantage of people in the autism spectrum. Like where, where, where do you put yourself in, in society? So say you're queuing for a bus and you've been queuing for a while and then somebody's like, you know, get out of the way, I want to push on. Then you'd be like, okay, well, I don't want 
you know, I don't want to have that confrontation with them and I don't want to kind of uh, bring up that negative animosity with a person who's being quite rude. So you kind of just let them get on with it. But then you put yourself in, in a, uh, a negative situation then. So you can't get on the bus, this person's taking your seat or whatever. And another thing is like, it makes you more vulnerable and you're open to uh, being like attacked because you are so quiet and meek in your way. And this kind of makes you more of a target because you know some autistic people like myself have ADHD. So you might be quite loud and unknowingly not really trying to be loud, but you might make yourself a target for people who are just kind of up to no good, you know, and they want to just, I don't know, make fun of you or bully you or whatever. And then another version of this is because autistic people have difficulties with um, filtering out conversations, like what is a good thing to say? What is a, a, a non rude thing to say? When is a good time to talk? When do I not talk up for people? So this could actually make them think that you are being rude when you're not being rude, you know, just literally talking but they could get the impression you're being rude or trying to start a fight or, or an argument or something then they could retaliate and there you go you're now in a vulnerable situation from no fault other than the fact that you literally just have autism and that's not anybody's fault it's just a fact of the matter and that does actually happen so my advice for this would be to um, there's, a, there's a few different things right there's, there's a few different things so these are my tips and takeaways for, for actually dealing with this so number one would be always tell somebody where you're going so they know where to expect you to be so like always have somebody looking out for you in that respect basically um you know where you're going from where you're going to be is definitely something that people need to know like my girlfriend always needs to know where i am because you know what if you know i get into trouble with something she'd like to know where i am and that definitely helps the second thing is always carry a communication device like a uh, like a cell phone smartphone or a tablet like smart device because you want to be able to communicate to the people who look after you and keep well with you if you're in a situation where you need to communicate with them and having a text device or like an iPad or an iPhone or whatever, you could then like message them and then they could sort out whatever you need because that's literally like a lifesaver. Having communicative devices with you, super, super lifesaving. Okay, so number three is asking for identification for people of authority. So when people come at you and they say like, oh, I'm a person of authority, uh, you listen to me, you say, well, can I see some identification that proves that you are who you are? Because without clarifying they are who they are and they don't have official certification identification on them, then you shouldn't really have to follow anything they say because how do you know they're not just scamming you, right? That's the idea of identification. That's why police carry badges and ID cards and stuff for that exact reason. Okay, so number four is never give anybody any money as a general rule of thumb, just don't give anybody any money. Always run it by like your, your parents or your partner or your best friend or somebody who is, you know, looking out for your best interest. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, people like to exploit people for money if they can see a vulnerability in their lifestyle. And this is super important because you don't want to be doing that. I mean, you know, I just feel for everybody who will relate to this right now. And if you do relate to this right now, pop a comment, let me know, uh, just because I, I want you to feel like it's not that. I've had people steal money from me as well, so don't worry, you're not alone. And I'm gonna give you a virtual hug, so, because we can't hug actually over the internet, we'll just do a thumbs up on this video, it's like me giving you guys a virtual hug, so there you go, done. Okay, so number five is a really interesting one, actually. It's carrying around um, hidden disability identification. Now, this could be in the form of the sunflower lanyard or the autism alert cards, which I actually sell on my website. Um, and if you actually sign up to my mailing list, you get 10% off my site, which means you get 10% off your autism alert card. And the link will be uh, in a card above here and in the description below if you wanna get one of those. But having something like that, an identification thing, uh, uh, to show someone that you are of a disability, then in airports like TSA, they can uh, identify you and say, oh, okay, it's a hidden disability. And they're trained to recognize hidden disabilities. It's not like you're walking around with a big sign saying, I am vulnerable. It's that like you carry a sunflower lanyard or you have an autism alert card and you use them as and when you need to in front of the people who will know exactly why you have those. So they were my tips. I hope you guys had some takeaways from this that's gonna help you in the long run. And it's just there to design to help you become less vulnerable in society and understanding why you're vulnerable as well. Because when we understand things like that, then we have the ability to overcome them potentially. All right. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.